the Expo begins. The most extreme and international biannual paragliding and hiking race that runs coast to coast across the Pyrenees. After the cancellation of the event in 2020 due to Covid, the race returns stronger than ever. The race runs from Ondaribia on the Cantabrian sea coast to the finish line in El Porta la Selva on the Mediterranean Sea. In this fifth edition of the Expo, there are 42 participating teams presenting 20 countries. These teams are made up of a pilot and an assistant. The pilot is the protagonist of the race, but without the assistance it would be impossible. The number of teams and their level is the highest in the 10-year history of the race. The 605 km distance, with a large imaginary X drawn on the route by the mandatory waypoints, is also the longest. The turn points are Lagun, Acus, Peña Montanesa, Arbas, the Midi de Bigo, El Coronco, Pic de los Moros, and Santa Helena de Rodes. This year, the race has been made more complicated by lengthening the route with this great zigzag in the middle of the Pyrenees, reaching 605 linear kilometers. The route is optional. Each pilot decides their strategy and the way to be the first to reach each of the turn points. All pilots have two GPS locators, one with a SIM card and the other by satellite. Therefore, we can follow their position live and know their speed, height and trajectory, as well as knowing their safe. It includes an SOS system for rescue if necessary. I did the XP already three times, was three times the winner. I'm here for the fourth edition and I'm very happy to be healthy. Everything looks good, good organization. I'm the only woman in this year's edition and it's a shame. I would like to encourage other, other women to, 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 to come and participate. I have a lot of experience of flying in different countries and hope I can manage as well here and my supporters will help me for sure. Eh, bueno, estamos aquí en la playa de Ondarribia, en la salida de, de esta edición de XP la, en 2022. Muchas ganas, empezando con la meteo un poco dudosa. Very excited to do the race. Uh, it's going to be very challenging and interesting, but I think we prepared as much as we can, so we're good to go. Hey! Rich Finstead from Australia. I think you're our first Australian, aren't you? Second. Second. It's Hayden Gray. And what are you looking forward to most in this edition? The adventure. Okay. Staying together with good friends. Uh -huh. We have a great team. My second uh, time in the x -Pier. And this, this year it's uh, much different from the, the last edition because it's uh, longer. And what do you think of the route? Uh, go around to La Room and uh, maybe for Tuesday in turn point two. Mm -hmm. And then I hope a good weather for fly. Yeah. Eh, pues nada, aquí estamos en Ondarribia para salida de la x -Pier. Son siete días y bueno, es mi primera vez que, que participo. How are you? Uh, good, good, good. Yeah? yeah? You feel prepared, ready? I think I'm ready. Team Argentina? Team Argentina, yeah. How are you doing? Really good. Yeah. Um, really good and really look forward to start the race, mm -hmm. finally. <laughs> yeah. After some days. Hello, my name is Rémi Bourdel and uh, it's my first edition for the XPR race. Pues somos los únicos tres que estuvimos en la primera edición y en esta. Super stoked to um, to uh, do the race today. I think. Yeah, I hope I can do my best. Mm -hmm. I have a good team. I'm motivated. You had a lot of stomach problems last time yeah. and had to take some rest periods. And this yeah. year you're fighting fit and you're. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a little bit of troubles with my knee the last past weeks, so I hope the, the knee will hold up. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll see. Three, two, one, the race to La Run begins. A 23 kilometer race to the first turn point and an 870 meter ascent to then fly if conditions allow. At the moment the forecast is for rain and that in principle will not allow them to fly.
In just two and a half hours, we have the first athletes reaching the top. First, French pilot Maxime Pinot, second overall in 2018, and fellow countryman Tanguy Réon Gold, and then Spain's David Copas. For these last two, it's their first participation in the Expo. Little by little, the top of level fills with the pilots, but the conditions are not very good for flying, so they will not be able to cover long distances. However, at least, they will be able to fly from here since the forecast weather does not materialize and it does not rain. That's always good news. Yeah, it was uh, quite fast on the flat and then a nice uphill to, to get there. And uh, it was cool, cool pace. So yeah, now we have to make the best out, out of the, the weather. It's a bit rainy, the cloud base is quite low, but uh, at least it's flyable. So we'll see now. <laughs> Thanks. Corriendo un montón. <risa> Nada, muy bien, el ritmo no, no, no ha sido malo. Pensaba que a lo mejor iba a sufrir más y por el momento bien, por el momento bien. No quiere decir que no esté cansado, <risa> pero el, el ritmo ha sido bastante bueno. Y bueno, a ver qué nos viene ahora, porque ahora sí que es un poco, hay que tomar decisiones y soy un poco comprometida. Hola. I decided to walk a bit slower at the beginning because I thought it doesn't make sense to race uh, because the conditions are not great. Now we have to just go along the line a bit. Bueno, pues ha sido duro. <laughs> Mucho asfalto hasta el pie de la montaña y nada, después la subida esta y nada, el tiempo ahí a veces que está empeorando cada vez. Remember that the pilots have to complete the entire route flying or hiking whilst always carrying the glider and the rest of the mandatory equipment, which weighs between 6 and 9 kilograms.
Pues sí, llevo andando muchísimo rato, eh, por fin pude despegar, eh, hice la ladera aquella y me dejé ir por la fuga. Eh, he estado intentando ver si mira, hay un pajarito, ahí hay algo, pero no me dejó, no, no pude remontarlo. Eh, así que nada, aterricé aquí, que vi que mi, mi soporte está aquí cerquita. I'm Halli Schrem from Austria and it's my first time in the Pyrenees. So yeah, the experience at the moment. I'm surprised with no with no sun it works some thermal some some soaring. And now it's a small mistake. I go away too early, so I have to hike 10 kilometers now on the road and try to catch up, keep on running. It's just 40 k's already done this day, I think so, like this. <laughs> and let's go. I am Thibaut Vogler from Belgium, uh, first time on the XPR. Uh, actually, we have a, a good, not a bad day, we we'll tell, tell this like this. Uh, and yes, uh, we made a better glide, not a big flight, but a, a better glide than we could expect it. So it's nice now we have to walk two options until the road, the road until saint jean pied de port or, or climbing until the big one, and then uh, we will see. So, two options. Need to shoot, but now it's time for walking, like every time. Just uh, how much kilometers to the sea? Actually, now more or less 550. <laughs> oh, we will see. It's nice anyway, so we enjoy the moment. It's the best. Y bueno, hoy la verdad que parecía que íbamos a volar menos, daban más lluvia las previsiones y demás. Pero la verdad que creo que hemos sacado tres, cuatro vuelos cortos, eso sí. Pero por lo menos nos ha ayudado a avanzar bastante. It's a really interesting day because it was not easy to decide which way and which mountains but finally I was able to fly a little bit and uh, so it's better than expected so I'm very happy until now yeah step by step <laughs> now we are here new area I never was here so it's nice new, new places are always interesting and it's uh, it's really good to to be here in the Pyrenees. <laughs> From the ground, their teammate follows them to give them logistical support, food, drinks, and they can even sleep in the van if it can get to where the pilot is located. Since at 9 p.m. they have to stop wherever they are until 7 a.m. the next morning. Uh, it's a long day. I think we, I made the 75 km uh, by foot and uh, 12 on a little bit more on the fly. We have done about 90 km between the whole trip, between the flight and the pateo. We have had to stop at 9 o'clock because it is necessary until 9 o'clock at 7 o'clock in the morning. Y nada, mañana a las 7 pues empezamos a ver cómo está el tiempo y decidir un poco la estrategia para mañana. beaucoup de marche quand même, plus de 70 kg euh, en marchant avec 3000 de dénivelé. Mais mon but aujourd'hui c'était quand même de suivre tout le long Krigel, donc euh, c'était vraiment euh, mon objectif. Et puis, soir je crois que je vais bien dormir, me reposer, et puis pour repartir euh, de nouveau avec Krigel euh, demain matin, on verra ce qu'on va faire, mais on ouais, va essayer de faire quelque chose de bien. After a hard day, during which basically you walk all the time, and with different routes, some from the north, some from the south. 
At the end of the first day of the competition, the classification is as follows. Frenchman Maxime Pinot is in the lead, with 64.5 kilometres travelled in a straight line, followed by Tanguy Riongoud, 64. And then the young Swiss, the youngest in the race at 21 years old, Neukort, at 63.5 kilometres. The great favourite, Kriegel Maurer, is in fifth position, only a short distance from the first at 63 kilometres. A day that has been characterised by a few short flights. So mainly it has been walking, and this will take its toll later, no doubt. The second day of the expert. The weather conditions are still not favourable. It is raining in almost the entire area of the Pyrenees that the participants must travel. So the day is to walk and walk. Some pilots, when reaching the tops, manage to fly down sometimes in the rain, which helps to cover some ground, but nothing comparable to when the weather is better. The question is, is it worth climbing to fly? Day two of the Expira, and uh, felt a bit uh, aching this morning, but um, we're shaking it off with a bit of running, so we've done the first two hours, and um, yeah, we're just gonna head up into the hills. Doesn't look like there's much flying today, so uh, yeah, we've got 14 hours on the road, uh, trying to just get to a coose, make our way forward, just had a bit of scran, just a bit of food, so feeling all right. So the day is beautiful, but the cloud base is a bit too low. We hope to start going up this mountain and maybe do a small flight, but doesn't really make sense with those conditions, so we just keep going along the valley. We expect some rain later in the day, but maybe it won't happen. So. All good, and uh, a bit more asphalt to go. Cheers! Parece que va a tocar andar mucho y tiene que parar de llover para que podamos volar algo, aunque sea un descenso, pero no tiene muy buena pinta de momento, está todo muy tapado, la nube es muy baja y bueno, aunque llueve, tampoco llueve exagerado. En el segundo día de la Speed hemos empezado a las 7 de la mañana, que es la hora que, que toca. Y nada, hoy toca andar un poco de momento. day of Xperia. Uh, the weather is holding, it's not raining on us, which is quite a, quite a nice bonus. Until now it's been better than, than expected, so, so it's always, always a nice surprise when you expect the rain's not raining. And I had already the first little glide and um, it was a bit tricky. I had to wait for the, for the clouds to clear for maybe half an hour, but it was worth it. It's always nice to start the day with a nice glide, not just road bouncing uh, but now there's a quite a bit of road ah, it's part of the game isn't it so we'll see how the weather develops hello i'm salome and i'm uh, with maxim so today we are just basically waiting for the rain to to stop so maybe we can fly a little bit but for now it's still raining so is going down uh, running and uh, we will continue and hopefully it will stop. <laughs> That's the plan. The day so far is uh, rainy, so at the moment we, we can just uh, just run and uh, run down even because it was in the cloud over there. 
and uh, yeah, it's not possible to to fly. So maybe it will it will be a bit drier during the day. So the idea is to push on the road, and then if we can do some glides in the afternoon to reach uh, Akus, maybe we can do that. We will see. El plan de hoy es intentar andar hasta hasta la tarde, que parece que hay un poco de subida de nubes y aprovechar a ver si podemos hacer algún vuelo a la tarde y ahora durante la mañana pues avanzar hasta arriba el collado y a ver si hacemos un planeo también y ya está, el plan de hoy es andar, 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 andar y volar lo que se pueda It's very humid. Um, I don't see a chance very soon for a flight, so it's road. And the road is not forgiving, so we're not allowed to make mistakes. My name is Logan from the USA and uh, making our way down this nice cloudy hill. Today has been pretty wet, um, but we started right at seven and uh, we are more or less, we've got enough people in front of us. There's uh, maybe seven or eight people in front of us that we can kind of follow their line and also make some, uh, some possible decisions on our own as far as catching up goes. But uh, yeah, we're in a great position. Really happy to be up here. The squad of athletes split into two, with the majority choosing the southern route, led by Maxime Pinot, who led the race for most of the day. On the north side, some teams, led by defending champions Kriegel Maurer and Noe Court, take a different, apparently longer, but less winding route. However, a few kilometers before turn point two, Akos, they practically come together. Bueno, de momento una paliza. Todo andando porque la nube está muy baja. Uh, hay momentos que llueve un poquito y claro, tampoco no, no nos deja subir a las montañas porque está el techo muy bajo. Y de momento nada, caminando. ¿Has podido volar hoy? No, había un planeo que podía haber hecho, pero estaba todo muy mojado, mucha humedad y me ha parecido que no, pero bueno, ahí hubiese, me hubiese ido bien para bajar el puerto volando al menos. Sí. The next jump point we can flat down and yeah, we will see. <laughs> Thank you. 
difficult the morning uh, under, the, under the rain and then um, in the clouds but finally uh, we could place a small glide a really small one but uh, it avoids some kilometers on the on the ground so you have to make a, a second flight maybe on that uh, that small hill we'll see but uh, it's nice to fly And uh, the weather again is better than we thought that it would be because we were really getting ready for a lot of rain, but it's holding. I had uh, one glide in the morning. It took a little bit of patience, like 30 minutes of waiting for the clouds to clear, but this, it paid off because it, it opened a little bit and I could glide, glide out. And then another one just a moment ago from the, from the hill behind us. And uh, other than that, a lot of hiking, but I hope it's not the, the end of flying for today. My name is Fred Juveau, I come from France, in Pyrenees. And uh, this morning we, we were at uh, Saint-Jean-le-Vieux and uh, we, come on the, we climb on the mountain up to Saint-Jean-le-Vieux, I don't know the name. And we walk a lot under the rain. <laughs> and uh, we took a, a just a, a little slot uh, in the descent to uh, to to, uh, to make a fly, so <laughs> yeah, it was uh, good <laughs> for the. So we, we did a glide just before, which was quite efficient, and then it was just climbing up here. And uh, we just will find takeoff now, because we are in the clouds, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll maybe go a bit down and make a glide after, and prob probably the last one of the day. Maxime will be the first to tag the Aquas turn point around five o'clock in the afternoon. But a little later, and coming from a different route, the trio of Maura, Oberona and Koch tag the turn point in flight and continue overtaking Maxime and landing in the rain.
few minutes later, Maxime, with a great run, catches up with the leaders. 9 p.m. arrives, the time that we have to stop, and we have four pilots equal in first position, with 121 kilometers traveled already, out of a total of 605. All of them are at the foot of the Aston Ski Resort, preparing for what, at last, will be a good flying day. 17 pilots managed to pass this complicated Akos turn point on the same day. It is worth mentioning Giorgi Villalta, who is the one who has covered the most distance on this day, covering more than 62 kilometres. And with that, climbing 16 positions in the general classification in comparison to the previous day. Okay, alors ce matin on est parti avec Rigol. On a décidé de prendre tout le long la route pour de 55 km jusqu'au premier décollage. Puis après on a décollé, on a réussi à faire la balise en l'air en évitant les nuages. So end of uh, day two and uh, it was uh, even worse than yesterday. Um, I think yeah on, on the ground we did like 80 kilometers. There were different routes were working and a thermal there, a thermal there and in the end we all ended up always at the same spot. It was funny. We are here uh, four teams. In Maxim Pino, he did really well in running. I was really impressed. And also Simon and Noé did well, and finally we are here together, almost on the top. And we hope at uh, better tomorrow. And I think for this it's quite good position. This is the classification at the end of the day. Maxim Pinot, Noé Kort, Christian Maurer, and Simon Oberauner are in the lead, all four together. Behind them, just two kilometers away, is Frenchman Timon Longy. They have covered 121 kilometers of the race in two really bad days. The distance between the first and the last team is already more than 50 kilometers. The third day of the Expo. Finally, what everyone expects, good weather conditions to fly and cover long distances. And the day does not disappoint, despite the fact that again, it begins with low clouds. That was a rough day. Honestly, that was a difficult day. First week. podamos hacer buenos vuelos, eh, poder llegar a la, a la primera baliza y, y cruzar hacia España, los Pirineos. Y nada, días duros, los anteriores días de mucha marcha, estaba contando 150 mil pasos en dos días. Con la mochila, mojado, con viento. Pero bueno, para eso venimos, es hike and fly, no es nada más fly. La caminata es parte importante y es una aventura y tenemos que que seguir con lo que nos toque, ¿no? Entonces esperemos que sea mucho mejor y seguir avanzando. Cada paso nos lleva hacia el porte de la selva.
we see different tactics from the morning. The group of Maura, Pino, Oberauner and Kurt decide to go up to the Astun ski resort and head east towards Formigal. However, those who followed them, Pierre-Emy, Timalongi, José Ignacio Arevalo, decided to go up to the Candanchu station, to the Basso. Arevalo would go even higher, to 2,600 metres, to the Asp Mountain. This would make the following pilots decide between these two options. At the moment we have a clear division between the two teams that have managed to catch the good weather and those that are still fighting in the northern route of France. In fact, this bad weather would also claim its first victims, causing the withdrawal of the teams of Fred Giraud and Eduardo Colombo. Hello, my name is Rob Curran. I'm from the United States. I live in Idaho. And uh, right now, we're at the ski station Astur. And um, we've been hiking very hard for two days. It's with some, some little flights, but really excited. Today looks better, and hopefully we can fly a long ways and do the fun part of this hike and fly race.
slider and everything was wet, but now it's now it's dry. <laughs> Now we will clean a little bit more and then take off and hopefully arrive around 10.3 this, this evening. It could be nice. Yeah, fly was good uh, yeah. for 10.3. Uh, ladder landing and yeah, not so good. And yeah. hike up to the turn point and fly to, to turn point number four. Okay. <laughs> and the next plank is uh, a take off now. Run, run, run. Up. Yeah, run up that mountain and the, and, uh, and the fly. And start and fly to, to yeah. the turn point four. Today I have very good position to fly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good luck. Thank you. Bye. Very good luck. I hope to fly as far as possible. Hopefully no hiking anymore today. For me as a Swiss, a bit tricky, we don't have so much forest, but I hope to find one. Oh la la, vive la France! In a formidable flying day of more than eight hours, it would be the Frenchman Pierre Rémy who covered the greatest distance of the day with 174 kilometers. Behind him, Mauro and Pinot with 172 kilometers, starting and finishing the day together and ending up in the lead. Thank you for teamwork. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> you too. Wow. Today, seven pilots covered more than 150 kilometers of the race, and many others more than 100. Jose Ignacio Arevalo retires and shares his impressions. Y he echado un ojo, vi que no había ningún hueco, volví, por eso he, estado, he hecho dos, tres idas y venidas y yo no he visto ningún hueco. Entonces, eh, nada, he decidido 
bajar para aquí. Sí, porque, no, 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 Además de la prohibición es que es peligroso, creo yo, tirarme, no sé lo que hay ahí detrás y dónde están las montañas exactamente y Desde como luego. veis está la montaña escapada. Así que nada, aquí me he bajado. Further behind, they've also been able to fly. Here is the winner of the first edition of the Expo in 2012, Inigo Gaviria, sharing the sky with Yuki Emoto's assistant. Yeah, my day was good. It's very good. Big hike, uh, uh, 16 kilometers. And yes, this is the second flight from the pass. Mm -hmm. And go away, and I hope the weather is tomorrow also okay for a happy flight. At the end of the day, seven teams had already passed turn point four, Arbas, and we're approaching turn point five, the Midi de Bigorre. Let's have a look at the rankings. In the lead, and again tied, Kriegel Maurer and Maxim Pinot, who have already covered almost half the race at 293 kilometers and are 37 kilometers from turn point five, Midi de Bugor. Next, Frenchman Pierre Remy, three kilometers behind them, closely followed by Austrian Simon Oberona. It should also be noted that there have been some teams penalized for breaking the race rules, which means not being able to progress for a number of hours. We are still, still discussing like maybe two strategies, so probably let's see on Peña Montañesa the wind and the conditions. If we, if we could sleep uh, three or four hours more, it <laughs> could be nice. <laughs> Fully flyable, but cloud pace is still very low. The fourth day of the Expo. It is turning out to be the toughest edition in history. In other editions, at this point, some of the participants had already reached the finish line, but for now, their leaders are only halfway along the route. The day begins with the two leading athletes together. They take off at about 40 kilometers from the Midi du Bougot turn point. The pilots who are in the lead reach the emblematic fifth waypoint, the Pic de Midi du Bougot, which marks the northwest of the X. Conditions are tough here. This way, I have no idea how it works. This way looks really bad.
realidad fue muy bien, los vuelos fueron muy bonitos. Eh, fueron dos vuelos, desde una pequeña montañesa, con un sur muy fuerte, cruzando por, 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 por todo lo más altito aquí de Pirineo. Súper bonito, también un poco de desnudito. They try to reach the Spanish part of the Pyrenees as soon as possible to the next turn point of El Corronco near Boitaul ski station. The forecast is for bad weather on the French side, but better on the Spanish side. But the strong wind on this day would prohibit most flights. It's beautiful up here in the Pyrenees. And this has been an amazing race. So far, it still looks very blue. So no signs of any tumuli or also not many birds who are also already thermaling. So that's a bit the tricky question of today. Peña Montanesa is a massive frigging cliff, and so yeah, I'm. I'm hiking up to turn point uh, three, but yeah, it's been an incredible adventure, um, pushing my body to the, and my flying skills to the limit. At the end of the day, Mauro finds himself in the middle of the mountains at an altitude of 2,800 meters and has to spend the night in the Potillon refuge, accompanied by his assistant, Ramon Krebs, who brings him clothes, sleeping bag, food and other things necessary to pass the night. Ben Aujourd'hui c'était une belle journée, euh, j'ai fait 25 km à pied et euh, au moins 120 en volant ce qui m'a permis de faire la Peña Montagnesa, Arbas et de finir ici à Moléon Barous. While some teams are on their way to turn point 6, many others have just passed turn point 2 and are battling with bad weather. Although there are also some teams enjoying the good weather in the midsection of the course. A day characterized by long distance traveled on foot, since the strong south wind prevented flying, or at least made it difficult. However, Thomas Matera, Fabian Umbricht, David Coppas, Cedar Wright were able to cover distances of about 70 kilometers. Others were not so lucky. They had to walk and walk. Hoy ha sido el segundo, pero la de hoy ha sido una barbaridad. O sea, se me ha ido toda la vela, he caído, pero caí a calle y se me ha reabierto hacia adelante con una rabia que esta vela no tiene. Maxime, Kriegel and Pierre have been in the lead since the competition began, separated by just seven kilometers. They're about 50 kilometers from the next turn point, that of Coronco. The goal is 250 kilometers away. We walk in a hut to sleep up there and hope for less wind tomorrow morning. Finger crossing. In Arbas, no a mí no me ha funcionado el día, uh, Chevy que ha salido delante y Lars que ha salido detrás, todos los dos han, los ha funcionado el día, yo adelante no, no lo he leído bien y, y he aterrizado. Y bueno, ha sido un poco de bajón ahí. Pues el tercer vuelo sí que me ha dado un poco de, de vidilla y me ha, me ha acercado ya a la, aquí, detrás de, de este collado. Y ahora queríamos hacer el último vuelo de planeo hacia aquí a la tarde y hemos tuvido que salir, hemos subido en el collado y bajar otra vez, que ha sido una paliza. Behind them, we have Zivon Obarona in fourth position, being the fourth and last pilot to tag turn point five, Midi de Bigor. Six more pilots are between our bus and the Midi. End of day four, it's been a grueling day, as always. I think everybody in this race is all at the same place, they're all tired, 
we will be pushing to the max. The guys at the front are just going faster, and I think they're, they're stronger, but then they push further, so everybody gets the same time. <laughs> uh, today was really good for us. We managed to cross the valley into uh, Akus for breakfast, into the turn point, and down for breakfast. Okay. And I got it by 20 meters. I was gliding like with my hands in my pockets, with my head tucked <laughs> down like this. So I could just get the turn point and I stayed in the turn point for about 10 seconds and then out. So it was really cool, uh, really strong and it's turbulent. So after a little bit of the valley I thought, cut it out, I landed on the slope for safety and then just walked. So, uh, oh, coucou! <laughs> Alors donc là, euh, euh, donc le premier jour on est parti un peu, euh, on a fait de mauvaises options, donc euh, on a fait un peu de kilomètres. Et plus de ça, je me suis un peu mal au genou. Et depuis donc, le premier jour, en fait je marche plus, je ne plus. Et en plus de ça, la météo ne permet pas de voler, donc je fais que marcher. Et euh, demain encore, ils sont sur la pluie. Et euh, là je sens que je ne peux plus marcher grand chose. Surtout à la descente, dans la montagne c'est impossible je pense. Donc on est là, euh, si demain ça fait une de voler, bah, on monte. Et sinon, bah, je prends une demi repos. Let's remember that Kinga Marstellert is the only female participant and after four days fighting against time and conditions, she has not lost hope of reaching the finish line. In the classification, she's halfway in 22nd position. Uh, another interesting day. It was a little bit windy here in Spain today and a lot of pilots decided not to fly at all, which we respect and, and um, it was probably uh, not a bad decision. I did fly, I made some decent progress, but it took quite a bit of effort and um, yeah, and uh, it was quite committing. Uh, but this is what racing does to us, doesn't it? it just pushes us a little bit a little bit uh, harder and a little bit farther than we would do on the normal uh, recreation on a Sunday leisure flight. And then there was a little bit of hiking and then another flight, uh, which also saved a few kilometers, just a glide here into the valley. Again, lot of wind, not much penetration, a little bit flying backwards, a little bit flying forwards, but all under control. Nice landing, beautiful camping site by the river and uh, ready to finally hit uh, another turn point tomorrow. So fingers crossed that it's not gonna be too wet tonight and uh, tomorrow because the weather tomorrow doesn't look great. Other teams withdraw. Italians Lino Colo and Giuliano Minutella, Spaniard Luis Linde and Austrian Helly Schrempf. Crossing the Pyrenees from coast to coast by just hiking and flying is an extreme adventure and these days have been really hard due to the great distance covered on foot, and these take their toll. It is worth mentioning the work of the assistants. Without them, this race would be impossible for the athletes. Here is Thibaut Vogler's assistant in search of his pilot. Quinto día, eh, días muy duros, los últimos cuatro. La idea es hoy ver si podemos subir un cerro aquí cerca, Cerro Pelopí, que tiene unos 2.000 metros, y planear hacia el próximo waypoint. I tried to launch, but wind, rain, uh, blowing over the back, way too hard. You know, people talk about how hard this race is but it's, it's harder than that. <laughs> this is like the hardest thing I've ever done. We continue with the fifth day of the Expo. Tiredness increases, but they do not lose sight of their goal to reach at Bolt de la Selva on the Costa Brava. Many of the participants comment on how hard the race is. It is pushing them to their limits.
On this day there are no big flights. Bad weather and strong winds hamper all the teams. So it will be time to walk, uphill or downhill. This is a really nice place, but I hate it because it's full of rocks, no trail. This is the trail, as you can see, very difficult to find and it's so slow and it's windy, there's no, no chance to fly. Try to be fresh. I stopped earlier yesterday, like two hours before the end of the day. But uh, I, I had to rest, and I knew that today is going to be a long day running. So here I am, just pushing uh, to catch up in the front, and then. Um, I just want to go to Spain to find some thermals. I mean, I am French, but fuck, I love Spain right now. <laughs> because uh, flying at 3000 is better. Huh? <laughs> you think but you will be able tomorrow to do that? I don't know, let's see. We push. We push until the end. <laughs> While in the lead it was impossible to fly, further back they did have that possibility and take advantage of it. Eso fue la salida en Peña Montañesa ayer, última hora, se enganchó en una roca. Hay algunas costillas rotas también, que esto me preocupa un poco más, esto de aquí y, y como veis, o sea, hay una diagonal y las costillas. Entonces, viendo esto, evidentemente esto hay que repararlo, <risa> esto ya... El freno ya llevo un par de días que no me da tiempo a reparar uno pequeño, este pequeñito que tengo aquí. Así que hemos decidido que hoy vamos a dedicarlo a reparar el equipo y, y nos quedamos aquí que es una zona de vuelo súper buena para mañana a ver si las condiciones de, bajan un poco de viento y nos permite ir. Porque hoy sería andar 40 kilómetros, 2000 positivos, para llegar a a Francia, donde está lloviendo durante todo el día, o sea que tampoco... Tomorrow's looking a lot better weather-wise, so I'll be able to cover some distance and, uh, yeah, hopefully make it down to uh, turn point six and get on the better side of the Pyrenees for flying. It's raining like all the time and it's tough, it's really tough, so um, it really is like it helps and yeah, let's hope for some better weather. Nos ha llovido todo el rato, nos ha pillado un vendaval brutal, eh, todo el tiempo es mojado, tiritando, eh, ha sido muy, muy, muy duro. 
Uh, it's a day of hiking and uh, uh, it, it was a nice walk uh, just behind the, the Aneto and then it was a complete nightmare to go down here. No, no trails, just in the rocks everywhere. So yeah, I feel tired now. I, I'm just, uh, I just want to do this uphill and go down the other side, but even I think walking because uh, when we see the cloud, there is still 60, 60 km per hour uh, cloud base. And uh, on the ridges was maybe 80k. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see, but uh, I think uh, no flying today. The leadership of the race alternates between Mauro and Pino, who now take different routes. This is a place, huh? Very nice here. I think it's better to hike the Pyrenees than to fly, because now I can see all the nice places. What do you mean? Uh, yes. It's better to hike, huh? <laughs> yes. Very nice here. Now we go left on the pass, only 800 anymore. We hope that the wind is weaker tomorrow and uh, that we can fly because uh, all day walking like this it's not possible for my legs and I hope to fly tomorrow. Although at the end of the day, once again, they end up together, under the 10.6 Coronco. And then everything was going up and then I looked down and it was like all this cloud. And I just, I was like, oh my God, the whole French side's covered in cloud. And then I saw this hole. And so I flew the hole and went down and landed. It was insane. To his surprise, and that of everyone, Pierre Remy taking a different route in the Castejon de Sos area and despite the strong winds was able to take off from a low point and fly the distance to the Coronco waypoint. He lands more than 25 kilometres ahead of the other two leaders, near the Pic de Lorri, an area that has been a turn point for the expert in other editions. A great move by Pierre and his team, now placed first with 155 kilometres to go.
No, I can't. We would finish eighth this day. Shows us another way to do hike and fly. Whilst always respecting the rules which state that they cannot move more than 150 metres from where they have ended up at 9pm. And at the end of the day, if your athletes do really well, you can end up in a really comfortable place. Comme là, il y avait une place pour que mes assistants viennent me récupérer et qu'on n'est pas très loin des chemins de randonnée. Je me suis dit qu'il valait mieux s'arrêter là. Voilà, j'ai pas bougé, je me suis posé, j'ai plié ma voile et, et c'est fini. J'ai mal à remonter dans la vallée de Viela. Je la connais un peu cette vallée et euh, il y a quand même beaucoup de brise dedans donc ça devient très compliqué. Et, euh, je pensais qu'on allait arriver à peu près au de point en même temps. Et en fait ils ont eu beaucoup plus de mal, ils ont beaucoup marché. Et euh, moi j'ai eu la chance d'arriver en volant euh, dans des conditions qui étaient euh, encore bonnes. Pierre would be the pilot who covered the most distance today, with 72 kilometers, followed by Yuji Yamoto, who managed to travel 60 kilometers, Thomas Matera 52, and Tim Alonji 48. Then Maxime and Kriegel with 42 kilometers. The forecast is good for tomorrow, and there'll be a westerly wind that will help them, so in theory, they could reach the finish line. It will be a spectacular duel. Three points on this. Firstly, Kriegel has won this competition three times before and the final turn points are always somewhere in this area. He knows them very well. Rob Kern here. Um, I've, I've made a stupid decision and I guess trying too hard and uh, not trying smart, just trying hard, trying dumb. I uh, tried to walk up to the Peña Montanesa turn point and tag it, thinking that I could descend back to the van tonight and then I just got cut off. And so I guess I have, I'm gonna like sleep here, which is kind of shitty. Uh, should have just should have just waited. <laughs> yeah, but my friend Victor has <laughs> kindly brought me a bit of extra water and an apple, and uh, we're chilling. And uh, my my supporters are gonna come bring me a, a bivy kit. So all good, but dumb move on my part. Cheers. The sixth day of the competition and there's little time left, and it promises to be an exciting day. The goal is within reach of those who are in the lead, since the weather seems favourable. If they have a good flight, they will be a few kilometres from the finish line, or even at the finish line. Pierre has a lead of 25 kilometres, and this could be very important. But this is hike and fly, and anything can happen. Salut, sixième jour, nous sommes euh, au sommet de Lori. Il est euh, 10h du matin à peu près, c'est une bonne première montée et on va pas tarder à décoller. Maure et Piro acaban de despegar del Corronco. Kriegel and Maxime take off shortly after 8 o'clock. To everyone's surprise, they gain altitude quickly.
Fagel and Maxime, who would land on the slopes of the Pic de Lory, hunt down Pierre in an incredible flight for that time of the morning, while Pierre watches from the ground as they reach him. In the end, the three are together at the Pic de Lory. It seems like a new race, and it starts now, 175 kilometres from the finish line, on the sixth day of the competition. This turns out to be an exciting race to the finish line. Finally, three hours of flying, turn point seven. Together with Pierre and Maxime. Very nice. Behind them are the 32 remaining teams that do not stop fighting for positions in the general classification. After the three of them flew together for hours, after making the Pic dels Moros turn point, Maxime is separated from his companions, who go on ahead. However, Maxime reaches a higher point in the Canigo area and manages to pass on to the south face. This means he takes the lead from Kriegel, who stays in second position, and Pierre a little bit further behind. These two have not managed to cross Canigo in flight. Maxime Pinot lands 19 kilometres from the finish, so he has a great race ahead of him. Everything indicates that he will be the possible winner of this edition. The weather condition looks much worse than, than in the forecast. So, but I don't, I don't think it makes sense to wait like all day here. 
you're right. And then you're being calm. It's like, okay, I just stay with the group. And we got there, it's like, I should have gone there. We are walking up to the launch on turn point five. Kriegel, who's 20 kilometers behind, after a hard and fast climb to a call at 2,400 meters, takes off from under Canigo and quickly gains altitude, so nothing is decided yet. Maxim was some meters higher, and uh, below it was not climbing. Uh, now I have to walk up there to the clouds. Thirty-five minutes in the rocks. Ooh. Where's the takeoff? Here's the takeoff. Pierre would do the same, but later, and he did not manage to jump the last ridge before the valley that leads to the finish line. And here comes the incredible outcome of this edition. When everybody believed that Kriegel would land in the area where Maxime landed, he managed one last saving thermal that put him 1,500 meters above the ground and practically gliding to goal. In fact, Kriegel has covered 200 kilometers today, which is the longest distance by any pilot during the race. For his part, Pierre seems to have fallen too far behind to catch up with Maxim and Kriegel, getting stuck on the north face of the last mountain range before the goal valley. 1,300 meters over the ground. Let's go. Ah, tricky end, but almost 3K. At 8.15 p.m., Kriegel, for the fourth time in a row, becomes the winner of the x -Pier. He only has one triumphant flight to the beach at El Port de la Selva, which is no longer part of the race time, and which we'll do the following day. For sure, the, the route is more challenging because of this X. Mm -hmm. Crossing the, the, the ridge uh, twice. Then we had strong wind conditions. We never had this strong wind. I never, I did seven, uh, four x -pier and seven x alps and I never hiked all day long. Nine p.m. arrives and no other participant has managed to reach the finish line. Well, there is one more day left for other teams to reach the long-awaited goal at El Porto de la Selva. Uh, yeah, it was a great day to share with uh, with Kriegel and, uh, and Pierre. So we had a, a great battle together. And uh, in the end, I ended in the flat. And uh, Kriegel just find the last thermal in the flat to to escape and uh, land near the, the goal. But uh, yeah, it was a nice day. I've been walking the whole competition. And whenever I go anywhere, the wind's coming the wrong way or the clouds been down at the bottom and I couldn't fly. Today I walked up a very, very big thing and I took off and flew and I flew a long way. So I'm a very happy man. Here in Campos in Huesca and it was a really tough but amazing day. It was all blue skies so it was a little bit more challenging. I did an early morning flight. I was able to get ahead a little bit but then there was a lot of walking to get up to Peña. Y cometí un error grande, uh, fui muy optimista y por encima de la nube desde, desde la quinta de, de TP5 pensaba que las paredes de enfrente, todo aquello acantilado, iban a funcionar y que iba a ir pudiendo ir, ir por ellas hasta rodear 
pero no fue así y me vi encerrado y, y si seguía volando me metía dentro de la nube porque todo, la, todo el valle, toda la, la estación de esquí y todo esto estaba tapado por un mar de nube y aparte de peligroso no, no se puede hacer tampoco entonces aterricé en una de las pistas de esquí bajé andando después de un buen rato sopesando qué hacer con el equipo y decidimos que lo más lógico era bajar por debajo de las nubes y volar pero claro, desde esa altura con ese poco de nivel no he podido rodear y ahora lo hacemos andando uh, estoy bastante fastidiado de este tobillo así que mañana a ver si tenemos un poquito más de suerte podemos hacer un buen vuelo Let's see how the classification is. First, Kriegel Maurer with a time of 130 hours, 15 minutes and 35 seconds. Second, Maxime Pinot, 23 kilometers from the finish line. Third, Pierre Remy is at 48 kilometers to go. And in fourth, Simon Obarana with 53 kilometers to go. These are the three pilots most likely to reach the finish line on the last day. We'll see how many more get there. This day again has brought good flights. In addition to the aforementioned Kriegel, Maxim flew 183 kilometers, Noe 175, Simon 165, and Tim 153. Sergi Claret and Chevy Bonnet have retired from the race. Jordi Villalta and Tim Alonji have been penalized for rule infringements. The seventh and last day of the Expo 2022, and the last opportunity to reach the finish line. Frenchman Maxime Pinot, who has stayed overnight a few kilometres from the finish line, arrives on foot at the last turn point early in the morning. Yesterday was, uh, I think, for for flying it wasn't flyable, but we flew. <laughs> yeah, it was it was in Cerdagne, in Cerdagne. Uh, it was so, so windy, windy. cloud-based with like 45, 50 km per hour 45? wind. 45? Yeah. Oof. Yeah, and after uh, I... after Andorra, I was uh, flying at 85, 90 k per Oof. hour without Oof. speed bar, so... Like... It's risky, no? <laughs> yeah, you have a bit, uh, yeah, better watch you can, what... You can take what off can... your glider if you want, eh? <laughs> now I don't feel it anymore. No, no, <laughs> it's part of your body. Yeah. A few hours later, at 11.46, the Frenchman Pierre Remy would be the third to arrive. Ça me fait vraiment plaisir quand j'ai vu le, le plateau de pilotes qu'il y avait. Je, je me disais que si je finissais dans les cinq premiers, c'était déjà bien. Et, euh, et puis finir troisième, c'est génial. C'est l'aboutissement de, de quatre ans d'entraînement. là, Et euh, je suis content. Et finalement, l'Austrian Zibon Oberrauner would do the same at 1.50 and would be the fourth finisher. That was tough. The last part. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Normally, all this humid, rain, cold, and then... <laughs> <laughs> the most beautiful glide was yesterday. Um, yeah. yeah, that was... Ah, the, the, to the la, to Le Tech. Ah, okay. It, it was, yeah. That yeah. was <clears throat> fighting to get thermals up and then couldn't manage and then walking just 100 meters up the hill and I could saw the plateau yeah. there and then there were like um f four horses one one white just um uh, yeah. <laughs> next to me they were running with yeah running with me <laughs> like ah, it's, it's like in a movie <laughs> in fifth position the very young swiss pilot neue Kort, is stuck on the north face of the seret airfield the last mountain he must cross 
The conditions are not good and after three hours trying without success, he finally lands and ends his race at 53 kilometres from the finish line. Sixth would be the Swiss pilot Lars Miestetter, who, thanks to a flight of almost 100 kilometres, would remain 91 kilometres from the finish line. Followed by Frenchman Tim Alonghi, this day he had to stop due to the penalty, with 94 kilometres to go. Behind him, Jordi Villalta, also suspended on the last day, and Thomas Matera, 147 kilometres from the finish line, with a great distance of 111 kilometres on this day. And closing this review of the top 10 in the general classification, it is worth mentioning a moment of intense emotion, the moment in which, almost as the race is over, the Spaniard David Corpas catches up with Canadian James Elliott to place himself in the top 10. It's just going so hard, I can't believe it. <laughs> oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> the expert is not only competition, it's also camaraderie and emotion. Oh, well done. <laughs> yeah, man, good point. Yeah, I saw you working on the other side. On this day, more pilots were able to enjoy the last moments of the Expo 2022, like Patrick Zieber, who conquered the complicated Abbas Turnpoint. Greg Hamilton, who shows us the beauty of the route, even if it's on foot. Or Thomas Matera, with spectacular images in flight. Cada noche nos dicen que tenemos que darle triple SOS para, para decir que nos quedamos ya, que aquí a, acabamos. Que tiene que ser, por supuesto, a las 9 como muy tarde. Y esta va a ser la última vez. Así que mira, uno, dos y tres. Hasta aquí hemos llegado. ¡Ah! <risa> The final ranking would look like this. Only four of the 42 participating teams have managed to cross the finish line. It's been a very tough addition, mainly due to the weather and the demanding route determined by the organisation. 
Many doubted that any team would reach the finish line, but they have shown that they are elite athletes and the best in the world. 13 retired teams also shows the toughness of this race. We close this edition with the celebratory flight to the beach at El Port de la Selva, where the award ceremony is also held. For all those who've been waiting to know more about this edition, you can relive the entire race by seeing the tracks of all the pilots on the Expo website at expo.com. We look forward to seeing you at the next edition in 2024.